working on a new kind of project today this is a little freedom scooter I'm gonna fix it up for my daughter to ride around on and it's got this little 12 volt 12 amp hour batteries SLA batteries oh and they go in this little pocket here and we got a mess of wire in to try to clean up and some wires hanging down here back tires flat but we're gonna do some modifications and get her all fixed up working on getting her all tore down now get the rear wheel off and the tube out I'm gonna have to get a tube tube's kind of shredded up a bit the seat off steering comes off the wiring still attached so it's just off to the side I'm gonna see about getting this body up and off and seeing what all this wires to deal with now here's what they look like down inside the skeleton I guess you would say it looks like this one's got a little 24 volt 250 watt motor supposed to draw about 14 amps and have about 2500 rpm and then here's the little speed controller on top little heat fin and stuff and it says it's a 24 volt controller maximum current is 30 amps and deficiency voltage protect is at 20.5 volts so when the battery gets down to 20.5 volts to right around there the speed controller will turn off automatically to help protect the battery. Alrighty. And then got our old battery pack over here and the seat and other parts. We'll start getting this cleaned up and I'll test the motor, make sure it's okay and the controller and stuff. If it's okay, we'll just roll with it for now. If not, we'll change her out or upgrade or something. And then I think we might be able to stuff a bigger battery up in here do some measurements and check it out so this is the 12 or 24 volt 12 amp hour battery pack that normally goes in our battery box and then this is a 24 volt 50 amp hour lithium battery module out uh, part of a Chevy Volt car battery pack these two modules weigh about well they weigh about nine pounds a piece so right about 20 pounds for this battery pack this battery pack weighs about 25 pounds then our SLAs the whole battery pack is about 12 inches long by about a little under four inches wide and maybe about four inches tall the Chevy Volt battery pack comes in about ten and a half instead of the twelve but it is about just under seven inches tall instead of four inches tall but it is a yeah, four and three fourths roughly wide now these are just a little over four or a little under four wide checking our battery compartment we've got just under five inches wide and then we know the SLA battery pack was 12 inches so we should be able to get 10 inches in there Hmm, let me see. And boom. We stuffed her in there. Still got some room for connections and such. Our battery terminals are right here at the top. Here's our negative terminal. And here's our positive terminal. So yeah. I think it'll work. Like I said, this is a 50 amp hour battery. 
as opposed to a 12 amp hour battery. So this battery should let it go about five times as far, at least four times as far. All right, let me see if I can get this body on here and see how well it fits around this thing. And the body seems to fit on back on pretty well too. It's definitely tight. Our little lid definitely won't fit on there. Well, not as designed anyways. I drew a few lines on here. I think I might be able to trim it down and get it to kind of block up this whole area here right down to the top of our batteries. And then with the residual piece maybe work it up something like that and there'll just be a gap in the middle we'll have to deal with. I cut the battery compartment in half with a simple hacksaw. Nice straight line. Alright, let's see how that fits. Something about like that. I have to trim out that a little bit more up to this line. Because I'd like it to sit down and cover up most of this area here. That looks like our other piece might be able to trim off this little edge here and we'll just have this little gap to deal with. So the Chevy Volt battery pack, when I cut the water jackets off it, doesn't leave a whole lot supporting the bottom section of it and it's kind of exposed as well so I'm gonna wrap it on three sides with some sheet metal that way it'll here on the battery box it'll go up over and down and tuck in these little edges right here so the whole battery will be protected on three sides and this metal plate and framework will protect the bottom half of it and what actually holds it together. But roughly from the top to the bottom, roughly about nine and a quarter. And then where it's not poofed apart, because poofed apart it's a little over five. This is the way it should be, which is about four and three-fourths, just under maybe. So we need a box that's about four and three fourths wide and I also measured up the sides down to this lip here and that's actually four and three fourths also so we need four and three fourths up four and three fourths over and four and three fourths down and that needs to be nine and a quarter long so that gives us we need a nine and a quarter by a 14 inch piece of steel and Got a piece of steel from the back of an old Kenmore refrigerator. That kind of textured stuff like you've seen on a million refrigerators. And it's, I'd say, probably about 16 gauge. So, I'm going to cut our 9 by 14 out of this and then bend it up for our battery box. Alright, I got our piece of metal cut down to 9 and a quarter by 14. And also, for our three bends, I've got it four and three fourths, four and three fourths, and four and three fourths. So now we'll take it to the bender. This metal's got the, the inside, I guess you would say. The unpainted side that all the styrofoam was glued to. And then it's got the more nicer painted side. We'll probably paint it anyways, but we'll make this the outside. That's why I put the, the 
bending lines on the inside if you can see them so we'll bend it on the inside so each side will be bent up and then our pretty white will be on the outside All right, we'll make sure both of our bracket bolts are tight. Grab the handle and bend her up. Now take it out, hold it down up to the other line and do it again. And we got her in the bender again. Double check that we all have four and three fourths to work with on our inside. Looks pretty good. And we got our box. Mm, should work. Take it out to the battery and find out. Alrighty, I got our battery box all cleaned out. You know, some cobwebs and dirt and a few little pebbles and stuff in there. Kind of smoothed it out a little bit. A few little burrs and stuff. And we'll see how our battery and the little box top fits. Alright, I got our module tucked all down in. Pretty nicely seated. I said our top should help keep this together here so I'll work on tucking our top in next well that tucked in there nicely I love it when a plan comes together we got plenty of space for tuck our wiring back down in here like I said the two terminals are right here at the top easy to get to Back out the way a little bit. And there's the other side. All right, I'm gonna finagle this body back on. And see how it looks. Alrighty, we got our body on there. It's definitely tight, but nothing like stressed, crackable tight. The only thing I noticed is it really doesn't want to sit down all the way. There's maybe a three quarter inch gap between these little pegs here or prongs, tabs, and then the hole in the floorboard that the body mounts by. But also it's just this plastic body that sits on these Two little tabs and nothing but some. All right, I popped the body back up again to give you a better look at them tabs and also the underneath the floorboard. Like I said, it's just a plastic floorboard that just sits on these two tabs, and they had a couple of little rubber washers, maybe an eighth inch thick. But since we need a spacer, anyways, I'm thinking maybe we can put a short board across both tabs we have to trim it down to fit up under our floorboard here but that'll spread the the weight out and make our floorboard stronger but also give us that three-quarter inch gap filler or lift so I'll trim up a couple of boards and Probably even paint them up so they don't look like bare wood. And also, while I had the body up, made up a pigtail with a couple of quarter inch terminals on the end and connected our black to the minus, our red to the positive, and then plugged it into the stock harness going to the speed controller. 
So now we can do a quick test to see if this thing actually works. Alrighty, I got our steering wheel handlebar dashboard front section propped up so we can do a test. Here's a, just a push button switch. I'm going to add a key switch there so nobody can just ride off whenever they want. But I'll push the button and alrighty, power button, power light lit up. We got turn signals to see if they light up. Yep. Alrighty. Oh, horn button. Alrighty. Let me. Yep. Alright. It's a quick test. Make sure everything works. Pop it back off. Alright. Alrighty. I got our wooden blocks. It should do just fine. And I also made them overlap the main frame here just a bit. They won't be in the way of anything anyways. But it'll support it even better. I got one for the other side as well. Got our body back on and most of our wiring tucked in pretty decently. At our floorboard support boards ready to screw back down and the original screw that held them on was these little dinky things didn't even have much of a head to them but since we got to go longer we're going bigger we'll put them in as such we'll go down pretty decently over them and Bolt it down from underneath. If there's too much excess, we'll trim it off. That's all good and tight. A little bit to trim off. There's our spacer boards. And now I would say our floorboard is stronger than ever. Alrighty, we got our lock nuts on our floorboard bolts. Body's all good and secure now. Used a patch kit. I was able to patch up the tube. See how long it lasts. Get the brakes all adjusted up and everything. And now I'll bring it down off the bench and work on the uh, upper stuff. Alrighty, I think I got pretty much everything squared away. Seats on good and tight. Steering's back on tight. Tire seems to be holding air. We got the brakes adjusted up. We'll do a quick test. On. Light lights up. Hit the throttle here. And the tire's got a bit of a bulge to it, but. Oh, let me check the brakes also. Yeah, alrighty. Seems to pass the bench test. Alrighty, I think we're ready for our first test run. Got the power on. And we'll... Well, we had to recharge the battery. So you're going to have to wait till the next episode, or part two, for our test ride and more upgrades. More to come. Like and subscribe.